Hello my friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. So in my previous video, I showed you how I use these little bottles with the alcohol and ink mix to create my flowers. And I also demonstrated one flower here using two colors and how nicely the colors blend together. So today I wanted to play with using three colors just to see what I could get. So in the previous flower that I did, I used the purple, but it was very diluted. There was a lot of alcohol in it and you can barely see it. Here's the flower that I created. I just got a lot of the yellow and blue mixing together, but the purple didn't show up. So if you watched the video just a couple of videos ago where I was working on tile and I was trying to um, create this wave effect and I put down the Purple Passion by Pinata and it's such a pigmented color that it would not move. So I got a little daring and I put a little bit of that in my purple uh, bottle just to get a little bit more uh, pigment and I was a little nervous <laughs> because I wasn't sure. So I only put a little bit in there, but I have to say that it worked beautifully. It gave me exactly the effect that I wanted. So you can see here that I'm putting down the purple, the yellow and the blue, and then blowing the petals right off the paper. And the combination of colors that I am getting in these petals is just so pretty. I don't think that you can see just how pretty it is in this video. The colors blend together so nicely and then create even more colors. And it's really easy when you use these bottles because if you use the ink straight out of the bottle, you have to put down one, the second, and then the third, then you have to pour alcohol over it. And by that time, the ink is starting to get away from you. So I find that using these little bottles with the ink and alcohol mix makes it so much simpler. So you can see I'm alternating the order in which I put the colors down. And you can see I even have browns in there where the colors all blended together, but I have purple and yellow and just green even. It's just so pretty. It's a very easy and fast way to create a very colorful flower. And you can even pour over areas, rather blow more petals over areas previously blown if you have an area that you don't like. So now I'm going to create my center. So I am, because I lost a lot of the pitch black in the center, I'm going to put a little bit on my little micro brush and I'm going to dot some back in. And you can see that I'm not creating a perfect circle. I want it to be kind of like the profile of the uh, center. So I'm just going to dab in some of that black and I'm going even beyond the center with my dots. Now I'm going to shake up my snow cap. And I like to dry it a little bit because I think it makes it thicker and um, it makes, it just applies better. Of course, you don't have to do this. This is just something that I do now and then. And I'm using my micro brush and I'm going to start dotting And I want to keep a heavier consistency of the white dots in the area that you just saw me dotting the top left hand side. And as I need to reload my brush, then I'll move down the center so that the dots are smaller and less opaque. And every time I start, I start in the same area where I want my light source to be coming from. And then I move down. And I'm drawing in between. And of course, if you're familiar with my videos and my style, um, I tell you all the time that creating these centers <clears throat> requires layers, excuse me. 
If you don't use layers, multiple layers, your centers will look very flat. And it's really important to decide where you want your light source to be coming from and to concentrate your dots in that area to brighten it up. And then as you move down to the area where you will be in shadow, just use less. You can see I dot, I uh, blot off some of the ink on the paper towel before I bring the micro brush to the paper because I want to make sure that my um, dots are consistent, that they're not too big. I want this to be kind of delicate looking, so I don't want big white dots. While you watch me do this, I'll remind you that all the products used are listed in the description box just below the video. If you don't see the list, click on show more or the arrow pointing down and it will expand. Now I'm using a black gel pen and I'm just connecting some of those little dots that I created to the center of my center. <laughs> so they're just not floating out there. And then I did attempt to use a white gel pen to connect some of the dots over the black area, but the, um, the white gel started turning kind of pink. And while it was very pretty, it was not the look that I was going for. And I just went over it again, those white lines with the black gel pen to try and cover them up a little bit. So here is where I brought out the white gel pen. And it may be a little bit difficult to see, but what happens is that the gel was absorbing the pitch black underneath. And you know that pitch black has a lot of different colors in it. So it's turning my lines pink. So I dried it and I just went over those lines with the uh, black gel pen. So this was a lot of fun to do and I'm going to be creating more of these using different combinations of colors. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you give this a try. If you do, please be sure to share it with me on um, our new Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials, where you can share your version of the tutorials taught on this channel as well as different techniques. Um, we have a wonderful group of members that are incredibly supportive and um, uplifting for certain. So I hope that you consider joining. I'll add the link to the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.